Hey folks, it's time for another unboxing and this time it's a smartphone. It's the Cat S41 rugged smartphone. You all know I reviewed uh, the S60 that had the FLIR thermal camera last year, so or two years ago actually. So this is exciting. Um, I just got to play with this and the S31 at CES. Um, I'll link to both the uh, Cat S60 review and my time um, at CES with these phones. Uh, but this is it. This is my review unit of the S41. So let's unbox this together, shall we? Uh, let's have a look first. So here's what it says. Um, it can be used, well, it has a large battery, 5,000 milliamp hour, which can be used to charge other devices, uh, very much like uh, USB Type-C smartphones can, uh, but this is not a USB Type-C device, it is a micro USB, but it comes with an adapter that lets you plug in another phone or another device to use this phone as a battery pack to charge the other thing. And you can limit the amount of charging, like you can say, uh, when the battery reaches 60% on my phone, stop charging the external device. Very interesting. But again, this is pretty standard if you have a USB Type-C phone these days, uh, other than the ability to set a limit. Uh, it's drop proof to 1.8 meters, of course, IP68 rated, water and dust resistant. This is what makes these phones so awesome. Very, very strong, very powerful devices. So. Uh, if you're hearing a bit of background now, that's actually my heater that just kicked in. So I'm going to turn it off real quick. Just hang tight. Here we go. So anyway, the, the whole takeaway about these phones so far with my experience is it being that um, they are definitely rugged and, uh, you know, it's not for everyone. They're a little bulky, but they're very cool. So here's on this side says cat phones built for it. It's got all the serial number information. And it's got the FCC ID, all that stuff here. All right. So, S41 smartphone. Let's open it up, shall we? Let's do it this way. Oh, it's taking forever for that box to drop. Boom! There we are. Yay! Nothing in here, by the way. And here it is. The phone in its box. Yeah. That's it. So... Let's have a look at the rest of the content of the box before we actually take a look at the phone and I turn it on and I kind of walk you around some of the specs. So the little divider here. Oh, look at that. You get a screen protector if you want. Mm. I don't like the optical properties of this. I don't think I would use it. The front of this is Gorilla 5, uh, Gorilla Glass 5, so I don't think you'll necessarily need to put this, this plastic screen protector on top, but it is included in the box. Um, then there's a couple of compartments here. Mm, let's take a closer look. You can see what's in here. So there's that pigtail I was mentioning that uh, this is USB Type-C phone, right? Sorry, a USB microphone, not a Type-C phone. And so on a Type-C it's easy, you know, you just plug an adapter and your phone can charge another device. But, um, you know, the adapters are pretty common. But this is actually what looks like an on-the-go adapter that lets you plug uh, something else to charge into. And I wouldn't be surprised if you can use this adapter to also uh, do data transfers and stuff potentially, uh, like on the go actually supports. So you can plug in a, a thumb drive or something. Well, I'll test that. And I'll test a true on the go adapter as well to let you know if the features still work with um, charging external devices. Because as I said, micro USB wasn't really designed to do this. So this is a bit of a, of a hack, but a clever hack nonetheless. You know, they could have just saved themselves the trouble and gone USB Type-C because, you know, really, why not? All right, then there's a charger, and this is a US charger, which is interesting, so it's clearly a US destined device. It's a little bit bulky, but maybe it supports a quick charge or something. It says something here that I can't read, it's too small, but... Uh, yeah, something express. Maybe it is a fast charger of some kind. Anyway. And then we've got a standard micro USB cable, type A on one side, where's the other end of this? Ah, it is here, hiding in the midst of all these cords, there we go. USB micro, as expected. So that's the content of the box, I think, nothing else in here, no, nothing else in here. Let's take a look at the phone, shall we? So, uh, very much in line with the industrial design of all the other cat phones with these um, 
kind of cut corners, which I really like. Um, makes it look really bulky and, and beefy. Let me turn it on, see if that's got a charge, and uh, let's remove that screen protector. Oh, here we go. So the screen protector just says, you know, there's a the, uh, bunch of keys, volume rocker, power, the programmable key, and it, you know, shows you how to put the SIM card and the uh, micro SD card in there. All right, let's remove this thing. If I can get it with my little nails, here we go. You can't hear that. It's actually not making any noise, very strangely. I don't know why. Here, listen. No noise. Hmm. That does not inspire confidence. I want my uh, screen protectors to make noise when I remove them. So, let me walk you through while it starts. Um, the left-hand side here has um, this, this little slot. Uh, it's a door. And I'm going to try to get it because I have no nails, so this should be interesting. There we go. So, as you can see, there is a SIM tray you can pull out and a micro SD push pull uh, card slot. And this SIM tray is a little hard to remove, but there you go. So, you remove it like this and you can put your SIM in it. There's a nano SIM in here. Uh, some models have a dual SIM slot, so this is then used for the dual SIM. And the back really has nothing. And then you just put it back in here like this, all the way in, and close the door. So again, if you don't have nails or you just freshly cut your nails, this phone is going to be a pain to use because you're going to have to do this for everything, like headphone jack, charging port, you'll see. Anyway, so here we are. We've got the um, SIM NSD card. we got the convenience key, whatever it is. I, that's actually a BlackBerry thing. but. This is a programmable button. You can turn it into a camera button. You can turn it into a SOS button that calls an emergency number if you're in the woods and you're dying or something. Uh, bottom here has a speaker. You can actually see there's a bit of a grill behind that. And again, I'm gonna try with a finger that has a better nail. There is a micro USB charge and data port. And as you can see, it's, it's got a nice gasket around. It's pretty beefy. The only thing I can foresee being an issue is some connectors won't fit in here because it's recessed. So be aware of that. And then you've got the right hand side, you know, screws and this grippy edge all the way around. The volume rocker, power lock button, okay. And on top, again, this looks like a microphone, but here's the important thing, and that's the headphone jack, um, which is under a door. So there you go, that's the tour of the sides. In front, you've got the cat logo, eight megapixel front facing camera, speaker, and a bunch of sensors. At the bottom, you have hardware keys, back where it should be, um, home and recent apps. Let me fire up the display again so you can see the welcome screen, you get an idea of, of what, it, uh, what it looks like. So this screen is 5.5 inches across 1080p. It's a much nicer looking screen despite the shockproofness of the product compared to the S60. The X60 uh, had a 4.7 inch 720p display, which was kind of getting a bit long in the tooth and didn't really look that great. This display doesn't look bad as some reflections because you get, you know, the, the display is recessed under this uh, nice thick Gorilla Glass 5, but you expect this, it's a rugged phone. 5.5 inches 1080p though, uh, sorry, five inches 1080p is a pretty awesome uh, screen size for a rugged phone, I think, uh, because you're gonna have bezels on a rugged phone. That's the way they go, right? Uh, in the back, you, again, you've got this, everything is rubberized. This is rubberized, the edges are rubberized. I mean, this thing is totally drop-proof um, or grip-friendly, grip, grip friendly, whatever you wanna call it. It feels really great in hand and beefy. Uh, 13 megapixel camera on the back with phase detect autofocus and LED flash, not bad. You can also see how recessed that camera is. There's a lot of beefy protection everywhere. Now, what I did like on the S60 was the, and you'll see this in my video, uh, you know, it's, it's, it had this aluminum bumper all the way around, like a machined metal aluminum uh, design instead of like this plastic rubberized um, finish, which, you know, would scuff up obviously, but not, not also protect the phone. This is gonna be really hard to scuff this phone up. I think these, Plastic beveled surfaces here will, will, will show a lot of abuse on concrete, but I think this grippy material is, is gonna be super tough. So that's the S41. 
A couple more things you need to know. Uh, Helio P20 octa-core processor in there, so it's MediaTek, pretty good mid-range processor. We've got three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and remember, as micro SD uh, storage on the side to, for expansion. No FLIR uh, thermal imaging camera like on the S60, that was the S60's big selling point. Um, but I think this is a more usable you know, phone for most people because it's a little more affordable, $450 uh, or so instead of the $600 or whatever dollars the uh, the uh, S60 cost. And, you, you know, the FLIR camera is really cool, but most people don't need it. So I'd rather have a 5-inch larger screen with a better screen resolution, frankly, and forego the thermal camera. And so this is probably the more, the more uh, you know... Uh, I don't know, it's a, I think it's a better choice for most people if you're gonna buy a rugged phone. Of course, this is gonna be more rugged than a Galaxy S8 Active, but the Galaxy S8 Active is still gonna be a flagship, so you know, keep that in mind. Anyway, um, I told you that um, battery is 5,000 milliamp hour, lets you charge other things. Uh, three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, Helio P20. That's the gist of it. In every other way, it's just an Android phone uh, with a single SIM in this particular version. So stay tuned for more about this. I'll be discussing it on my podcast in the next few days. And uh, of course, I'll be discussing it, uh, you know, with, uh, with some other smartphone experts. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what they have to say. Uh, subscribe to the podcast, of course, mobiletechpodcast.com. Go check it out. That's basically where I discuss a lot of these products that I get. And the videos are really just to kind of illustrate and show you what I'm playing with. Um, subscribe to this channel, like this video, all that other good stuff, and stay tuned for more coming soon. Thanks so much. Cheers.